Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Valentine's Day is coming up next week, so I'm about to review a Charlie Brown special. And it's been a while since I've done one, since the last one called You're a Good Sport, Charlie Brown, when I was living in my old apartment. Since I was getting ready to move to a new place, and I finally got one now. We had to wait a couple months for it, until we finally got the internet back which was in December. So now I get to do some more videos again. Yeah, and I'm sorry I've been lacking a lot lately, but hey, I had to take some time. I needed a break. I was tired. I needed some time. So there you go. Well, anyway, I just finished watching it, too. It aired on ABC um, today. And also, I have uh, the special as a DVD copy that I rented from Hollywood Video back in 2006 which includes There's No Time for Love, Charlie Brown and Someday You'll Find Her, Charlie Brown as an added bonus. Yeah, it was a Paramount release of the 2002 Valentine special called A Charlie Brown Valentine which aired on February 14, 2002 which is now going to be celebrated its 15th anniversary. Yeah, I know it's released um, from Warner Home Video later on, so you'll definitely get a chance to pick that up. But anyway, it's considered to be the first Peanuts special after the death of Peanuts creator Charles M. Schultz, which he passed away in 2000. It's also considered to be the third Peanut special to be shot with digital ink and paint as opposed to traditional cell animation. Yeah. The first one to do so was it was my best birthday ever, Charlie Brown. It was a direct to video release uh, back in 1997. And which, by the way, I do have that special on VHS. It hasn't been released on DVD by Paramount nor Warner Brothers, so I hope they get a chance someday. I've been waiting so long for this to be released and I hope they continue to go on because there are several other specials that they haven't done yet. It's the Peter Piper Charlie Brown it was released in 2000 just after he died. Well it was actually done even before his death and I have that on DVD. Maybe someday down the road I'll, I'll take a chance at it. But right now, I want to review a Charlie Brown Valentine, which stars Wesley Singerman as Charlie Brown, Corey Padnos as Linus Van Pelt, Lauren Sheffel as Lucy Van Pelt and Adora, Nicolette Little as Sally Brown, Jessica D. Stone as Marcy, Emily Lalandi as Pepper and Patty, Christopher Ryan Johnson as Schroeder, and of course Bill Melendez as Snoopy and Woodstock. This was created by Charles M. Schultz and directed by Bill Melendez. The special begins where we meet Charlie Brown sitting on the bench during lunch when he spotted the little red hat girl nearby, but unfortunately he had a nerve to talk to her because he's been feeling very nervous and scared. But hey, he even said to himself that he's not the greatest guy who ever lived. But then again, who is? I'm just the type of guy who never gets to meet any little redhead girls. Yeah, I don't blame him. He began to notice that the little redhead girl had dropped her pencil that's filled with teeth marks over around. And then Lucy came over and and took the pencil from him and just to give it back to the little redhead girl. Yeah. Which I know Charlie Brown was trying to give it back to her, but there you go. Later that day, Charlie Brown had went to the store to buy a cheap box of chocolates, just ready to give it to the little redhead girl by hiding it in the tree, and you know, thinking to himself that love can make you do strange things. That's what he thinks. The very next day, Marcy was making a Valentine's Day card for Charlie Brown and was telling Pepper and Patty if she is very fond of him. So then she went to Charlie Brown's house 
by telling uh, Charlie Brown if if he likes uh, Pepper and Patty, but he wasn't so sure. But then Marcy felt very angry by walking away, and and then Charlie Brown receives a letter saying, "I know you like me, and I like you." That just causes Charlie Brown to feel very excited because it might have been a card that was sent by the little redhead girl. But of course, Pepper and Patty had yelled at him, telling him that it was the letter from her. Charlie Brown went to buy the little redhead girl a Valentine, but he had to practice by giving it to her. So he tells Snoopy to dress up as a little redhead girl by wearing a red hair rig and while practicing to deliver the Valentine. But when Charlie Brown knocks at the door, Snoopy answers with the wig on, which apparently annoys Charlie Brown completely. So Charlie Brown was was definitely taking some more practice shots by trying to ask Linus to uh, go up to her and and actually get to talk to her. Otherwise, just have Linus uh, help him out. So Linus just went up there and talked to the little redhead girl about about Charlie Brown and and the, and the fact that he wants to talk to her and get to know her better. And I know that didn't work out. And to make matters worse, during class he was about to uh, talk to the little redhead girl by actually yelling at her <laughs> until she fell off of her desk and then later wink at her. But his eye was stuck. So he had to go see an eye doctor to see if, if his eyes are okay. Which also has another scene where Charlie Brown was trying to help um, the little red haired girl from the bully because the bully kept pushing her out of her swing. But unfortunately, he can't do that because he's going to be clobbered. So Linus came to the rescue by bringing his blanket and snap at him. <laughs> so I thought that work. Yeah. But then Valentine's Day came along. Charlie Brown was beginning to notice that the little redhead girl was handing out Valentines at school. He gets very excited that she might be able to give him a Valentine. But became very discouraged about it that she didn't even give him one. So then also there was going to be a Valentine's Day dance coming up at the same time, and it did. So he get he got ready, dressed up uh, very casually, very nice, and you know, wearing a suit with a bow tie. And Snoopy came along as well. They were ready to go inside the house just to have a ball until Pepper and Patty and Marcy showed up, and they were getting ready to dance until. He spotted the little redhead girl. And that's when it turns out that she has been taken. As uh, Linus had pointed out that it was Snoopy that was dancing with the little redhead girl. And you saw Pig Pan actually dancing around, yet covering the whole entire uh, house to be filled with dust. <laughs> Of course, Snoopy wasn't allowed to be in the party in the first place, but they decided to invite him anyway because Charlie Brown had told the guy that um, that he was just a kid wearing a dog suit. So this was like a costume party type of thing. So anyway. But we know that Charlie Brown isn't particularly a good dancer. You know, once he was dancing with Pepper and Patty and Marcy, as we found out because he, he keeps getting knocked out and fall. But then after that, when Valentine's Day was over, Charlie Brown felt very upset that he didn't get a chance to dance with the little redhead girl and didn't even see one Valentine at all. So that's a shame. But then Snoopy suddenly brings Charlie Brown a Valentine. He became very excited because that's where we get to see Charlie Brown holding a Valentine card. And I know in the background you see a lot of hearts coming up. So there you go. And it's a really sweet special. 
that they came out with. I mean, it's far different from the previous special called Be My Valentine, Charlie Brown, which is basically about him trying to find out if if all of his classmates had gave him a Valentine's Day card, but he never received one at all. Yeah, it just proves how mean they they really are. Until he finally gets a used Valentine's Day card from Violet. Which, that was really sweet of Violet to, to give him something because they knew they were being very selfish and, and rude and all that. That it's really a shame that Charlie Brown never gets anything these days. Well, but this is different. I mean, this time it's basically Charlie Brown trying to take a chance to go up to the little red-haired girl, gets to talk to her, and do all of that before, you know, something bad happens. And, well, there you go. <laughs> and I, I know there have been other specials that try to do exactly like this. I mean, where he tries so hard to to go after the little redhead girl, but he never gets a chance at all until he finally receives something. But anyway, the special, of course, um, as I just mentioned before, it was done with digital ink and paint with traditional cell animation in the mix. So you begin to notice that um, you see a white outline on Lucy's hair. Then you also get to see Snoopy's ears that had a white outline all around uh, his black ears. It's, so they basically dropped that later on in, in all the other specials that follow. Because, well, they thought it was a bit distraction. And almost trying to make it look almost like like one of those other um, you know, cards, uh, as well as uh, books and the comic strips and all that, where you begin to see how shiny... Uh, you know, Lucy's hair looks, or even the Snoopy's ears are. So, so I, I know they had to go for something, but yeah. but they fixed that problem already. And uh, but it was cool. Um, they actually use uh, the composing of of some of uh, Vince uh, Garardi's uh, music in the mix, even though they had David Benault to do. Um, the rest of the track to make it more special and just to keep it on going on. It's also considered to be the first special to not mention the name Heather because that was supposed to be her real name but they just referred to her as simply the little red hat girl as we know it. Um, and um, it was really interesting I mean the animation movements actually looks really cool uh, well made as it turned out, so it looks almost uh, rather different than than most of the other specials looked. I mean, back in the day, I also love the moments when uh, <laughs> Charlie Brown was trying to uh, sharpen his pencil, and then suddenly his shirt got caught in it <laughs> while everybody was just waiting in line just to sharpen their pencils. <laughs> that was really funny. And of course, you know, Sally came over with his friend. And of course, Sally came over with her friend, you know, trying to ask uh, Linus to give his a Valentine's Day card. But, and of course, always saying, Sweet Baboo, and, and he's going around saying, I am not your Sweet Baboo. Also, another moment was when Lucy was inside her uh, psychiatric help booth and suddenly she changes it to hold me bound times for the love of your life <laughs> just so um, Charlie Brown can actually ask for a bound times card that he was going to give to the little redhead girl but unfortunately it was a five day advance <laughs> yeah so he couldn't get it it was also considered to be um, one of the specials that finally got uh, millions of viewers uh, when it aired on ABC. Yeah, because it first aired in 2002, and I remember taping this at the time, you know, before I received a DVD copy. So it looks so much better. And I know for years that went along, ABC just keeps doing all these 
traditional edits just for commercial time. Yeah, because you know how ABC is. Anyway, and I remember this air actually aired um, before uh, the Winnie the Pooh special that followed, so they figured this would actually work. The special only lasted for 25 minutes. Um, some great voice acting all the way. It definitely plays it just fine. A lot of great moments here, you know, with um, <laughs> Charlie Brown, you know, trying to have his uh, ways to 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 get to meet the little redhead girl, try to have a chance to give her her Valentine, or even waited for her to give his Valentine as well. All that, yeah. Uh, anyway, but. Check out the special for yourself. It, it's fun. It's definitely worth it. So I give the special five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.